some of the things that I've really learned this past year in trying to focus more on this documentary reality TV style is just like, where do you start with a story? How do you start? Who do you start to focus on? And a lot of the times in my mentor calls, we talk about these things and I realize one thing that a lot of people aren't doing that we've started doing recently, and this has really, really helped control the narrative, if you wanna call it that, for the wedding day. And that's our pre-wedding interviews. And I'm not saying you have to go out and actually sit down and talk with your couples and do professional interviews, but something as simple as a Google Meet or Zoom call, getting to know their story. The day you show up to film with them at their wedding, you should know so much about them that you can almost control the narrative when you start pulling people outside and getting interviews or when you're asking questions in the bridal suite or the groom suite to try and get sound bites. You should have some sort of an outline so that when you start approaching them, you already know what you wanna talk about. You know what narrative you're here to chase. Everything else that you get along the way can be icing on the cake, but at the core foundation of it, you know what it is you're looking for. I think the hardest thing for me when I was starting this style was that I was not actually getting stories. I was getting a bunch of mambo jambo and then just trying to hope for the best in the edit. Whereas now we're a little bit more intentional with what we're doing. We still let them live their best life and they're mic'd up and so we get all these sound bites. But then at the same time when I'm pulling people outside for these interviews, I'm chasing a specific narrative. I'm trying to connect the dots. I may interview the mom and then take what she says and go interview the best man, then take what he says and then go get the groom. And I'm literally connecting the dots between my interviews because that's where my story is. Everything else that we get like in the bridal suite, in the groom suite, during cocktail hour, during the reception, all of that just kind of supports what we've interviewed and got. Whenever you get information, remember that. Like that's one of the biggest things and it took me a long time to just start doing that but remembering what we talked about, understanding like, okay, the mom said that he always grew up saying he wanted to marry a woman that was like A, B, C, and D. Well, then I would use that information when I talked to the groom to connect it. I may be interviewing him instead of asking, how did you guys meet? I'll bring up something that's really, that's real for him. You went from a previous relationship and then when you met Alexis, you guys didn't seem to, you didn't move slow, so to speak. You kind of jump straight in. No, what, what was so easy about the relationship in the beginning? I guess what I'm trying to say is that trying to find out the story the day that you show up to the wedding is not the best approach. You should have a background and then you should chase that narrative the entire day that you're filming. Tell, her, tell us something you always want to tell her right now. Okay. And so I want to tell you that I love you with all my heart and you are the greatest daughter. I think an easy way that we can start controlling the narrative, and I say this loosely because you don't want it to become something that is so boxed in that you already are, you, you know what you're gonna get and you're giving out scripts and stuff like that. But what I mean by controlling the narrative is guiding it in a way where you still leave freedom for the people to do what they want, but it's all kind of surrounding one objective or one talking point. One of the things we're gonna do this year is actually interviewing with the people giving speeches. I think this is something that we really drop the ball on as filmmakers because we always show up for the toast and the first thing we think of is like, wow, these toasts were great or these toasts were horrible. And we immediately start to criticize and judge what's being said based on if we're gonna be able to use it in the edit or not. And I found myself guilty of this as well. So trust me, if you're doing it, it's perfectly normal. One of the things that I wanna do this year is actually interviewing these people. Instead of the father of the bride getting up and saying a really long story that happened when she was five, that's great and I think she's gonna enjoy it, but it's so hard to fit that entire story into our narrative. Instead, I'd rather interview the father and maybe ask him or give him a certain question that he can just incorporate into his speech. Like for example, when you're walking down the aisle and you had your daughter by your arm, what was that moment like? Just give us a brief description in, at some point in your speech. Talk about that moment. In the edit, we now have something that we know we're gonna use. We can show the bride and her dad walking down the aisle and overlay it with this audio that takes place hours later that's referencing that moment, how he felt in that moment walking her down, handing her over to this man. How did that feel? And that's some of the things that I wanna do now going through the next year is really trying to shape the narrative in a way where it's still 90% raw and organic and just kind of reality, but a good bit of the pieces that we know we can control like speeches and first dances and things like that, we can shape this narrative and really try to hone in on the couple's story. Now, one of the biggest things that I've learned over this last year is 
not being obsessed with the perfect shot. We are filming a wedding. We're not filming something that's controlled. Th things are gonna be so chaotic. You're gonna have Uncle Chris hopping up with his iPhone and his iPad, trying to get a better angle because it's gonna look better than what you can get, right? Or you're gonna have things happen where maybe the photographer is in the middle and they are in the shot. What do you do? How do you adapt? These are things that are common and guaranteed to happen at a wedding because it is not a controlled environment. I think as filmmakers now, we're so focused on creating every single shot. Every single one has to be picture perfect. It has to be tack sharp. It can't be soft focus. It can't be shaky. It can't do this or it can't do that. All right, so I guess what I'm trying to say in this part is the reason you don't want to be so concerned with everything being picture perfect is because you might leave out a moment that the couple might really want to see. There's been so many times where I've had so many funny moments or just funny conversations that we would normally leave out because it wasn't like a wedding clip or it wasn't cinematic or it wasn't picture perfect. And truthfully, that doesn't matter. The story should always be prominent. The story should always come first. And if that clip helps your story, then you put it in the film. That's kind of what I'm saying here. Let's go ahead and jump back into it. I would pursue documentaries if it wasn't for weddings, but I keep it with weddings because the stories are so much deeper. To me, I'm a big romantic guy and I love a good story. I love a good heartfelt story. I'm the guy that's at the end of the movie, when the guy finally gets the girl, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm happy that that finally happened. As a doc filmmaker, I would say that that shaky camera, that in-person, that camera movement that we normally would cut out of wedding films, embrace that. Prime example is my Amber and Alex film, the most recent one on our, on our YouTube channel. The very first clip looks like we're running through an earthquake, <laughs> but it almost felt like we were running through the door behind them because of the energy and what she said in that moment. We needed it in the film. We needed to connect you because that was our hook. That was the moment where she was elated, like, hey, we're married. Like she screamed and she was excited about it. Good with his vibe. I'm he so did proud so of him. good. I was going crazy until about right before we went out there. So embrace the camera shake. Embrace the imperfections. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I say this, and I I say this very lightly because clearly I bring all these lights, and I'm really trying to control the look and make sure things look good. But there is a fine line between controlling it and letting things happen as they are. And there's a good amount of time where we just can't control what things are and how things are gonna look. So you have to lean into it and you have to embrace it, especially when you're editing. Don't always cut it out because the clip didn't stabilize right with warp stabilizer. Sometimes you just really gotta push the narrative first. Hair and makeup is one of those moments where, where I would encourage every filmmaker to stop filming so much hair and makeup. <laughs> just stop doing it. You can get clips and get good B-roll but spend that time instead chasing your story. The narrative that you've already outlined in your pre-production, the narrative that you're already familiar with, that's what you should be chasing. And you can do this both in the moment where maybe the bride's in the chair and you just pop up with a quick question to get her to answer, or you can do interviews where you take a bridesmaid outside and you talk to them and you chase the story and you chase the sound bites that you're looking for and you keep doing it. I'm nervous. I'm really nervous. <laughs> uh, I hope he likes the dress. I hope the wedding goes well. I just... Yeah, I'm just, I'm really nervous. <laughs> One of my favorite methods is when I get an interview and I notice that the person's very shy or timid or reserved and they're not really giving me the story that I want, but I know that they know the story. Like maybe I've already interviewed the bride and I know that her sister knows everything about their relationship, but when we do this interview, she's intimidated by the camera. So one of the ways that I like to do this is I'll, I'll still interview them, I'll do it on the spot, I'll let that interview kind of be a scratch take, then we'll go back up to the bridal suite, I'll let a little bit of time pass, and then in the bridal suite off camera, most of the time I'll just take my camera off the easy rig and I'll just start talking to that same bridesmaid, just having a good conversation like, yeah, so, Man, it's crazy, they met on Bumble, huh? Yeah, that's wild. And I'll get her talking to me, really opening up. The pressure is gone because there's no camera. She's not worried about there being a camera and she feels comfortable. But what I'm doing is I'm digging to get even better questions so that I can get the exact same response that she's giving me off camera, but on camera. 
So then I'll take her back outside. We go back to another location. She's already freaking out because, oh my God, this is the second time I'm outside. And now I can talk to her even more specific. I can be like, hey, so upstairs you told me that, you know, when they met on Bumble, you told your sister that this is definitely not going to happen. I don't even know why you're on that app. Tell me about that day. Why were you so confident that this was not the right move for her? Now I can guide her into what response I'm looking for because she's already given it to me, we've already talked, and she's even more comfortable. She can literally repeat what she already said and it would be great on camera. You don't know what it's like to fly till you had your wings cut. I was dinged up. It's all fun and games till they bringing rings up. I was lost up.